Hello, and welcome back to the second episode of me discussing my VHS collection. Um, let's uh, get right to it. Hope you saw the first episode. If not, it's on my YouTube channel. Check it out. Uh, without further ado, let's get to the tapes. First of all, we've got Rush Week. Uh, I believe this is a American college campus themed slasher movie. Um, featuring a stereotypical executioner's axe. Um, it is killing time on campus after all. Um, let's see, we've got some very basic looking stills. Looks like a woman in a state of undress there. Um, funnily enough, this features hit songs performed by the band The Dickies. Um, <laughs> if you know anything about this band, please let me know. Um, they sound amazing. I have not watched this yet, but I feel like I should just to listen to the amazing sounds of the Dickies. That's Rush Week. Then we've got Blood Tracks, and this looks amazing. Look at this sick cover. Uh, it's just got so much going on. Um, this is a uh, horror movie set on some uh, mountains, I believe, um, some sort of wilderness area. I believe these guys who are a hair metal band are filming a video clip on a mountain and they're stalked by some sort of yeti-like creature. Um, I believe that's him there. You've got some sex going on there. Uh, guns, helicopters. Um, a gentleman with an axe there. And like any uh, schlocky 80s horror movie, you do have some gore featured on the back there. Some bloody faces. Um, that's Blood Tracks. Looks amazing, I hope you agree. So then we've got Link, uh, which is a killer monkey movie. Um, not a horrible movie. It's kind of well done um, from the director of Psycho 2. Um, when man was given mastery over the beast, someone forgot to tell Link. And there he is in a snazzy suit. So you've got a monkey, uh, trained monkey, I believe, who uh, turns on his master. Um, Terence Stamp, very famous actor. It's also got Elizabeth Shue. Uh, next we've got Hardware, uh, which is not, again, a, not a terrible movie, actually quite a, a decent movie, especially for its art direction. Um, lots of really uh, cool red hues. Um, Post-apocalyptic movie. It's got some pretty, pretty interesting character uh, actors in here. Um, Iggy Pop is in this. Um, Dylan McDermott. So that's Hardware. Not a terrible movie. Ghoulies. They'll get you in the end. Um, this is a '80s horror classic. It was part of the sort of gremlins ripoff kind of craze that happened for, for a while there. Um, everybody wanted to get on the gremlins train, so this is Ghoulies. There were several sequels. In the third one, they went to college. Um, you've got some teens who, I uh, believe, want to summon some, some demons or something like that, or perform a ritual, and instead they summon the Ghoulies, who run amok, of course. The Stuff. Um, Killer Goo. Um, there, were, there was a lot of goo-themed movies uh, around the sort of 80s, uh, late 80s especially. Uh, the Stuff is some sort of a... Ugh, some sort of a, a gooey product that was made. Um, the movie stars Paul Solvino, who was one of the, um, the leading sort of, uh, mafia family guys in the 
Romeo and Juliet, or Baz Luhrmann film. Um, we've got Michael Moriarty, um, quite a famous actor who's dropped off now, unfortunately. He was very good. He was in the original Troll. That's stuff. The Norseman. Um, don't really know much about this film. Cover is badass. Um, it's kind of, I believe it's like a historical epic, so not a lot of sort of swords and sorcery. There's swords for sure, but not so much sorcery. Um, starring Lee Majors, uh, Vikings. Uh, but the cover is kind of done in the style of one of those kind of um, Conan, you know, the ones they are sort of muscular, half like naked ladies. Um, very sort of swords and sorcery cover, but uh, a little bit misleading, this one. Kill Crazy. Just look at that face. He's just kill crazy. Apparently. Um, <laughs> so this is one of those sort of... Uh, Guru, uh, urban guerrilla warfare kind of run amok sort of movies with a, again I believe a Vietnam vet who is driven over the edge and is forced to become kill crazy I believe these, a, a lot of these were made after the whole Rambo sort of thing happened in the 80s um, and uh, yeah this is one of the lesser known kind of Rambo ripoffs David Hevener, I don't really know much about this guy but he certainly is kill crazy. And we got Scanners 2. Um, not the better Scanners, unfortunately. Uh, one is still an absolute classic. Um, I don't really have much to say about this one. Definitely see Scanners 1. Uh, this one it was not directed by Cronenberg. It was... Uh, it just says characters created by David Cronenberg um, so he had very little to do with this one and it is definitely not as good as Scanners 1 Commando Squad they take no pr prisoners, they show no mercy um, again a squad movie, I don't know how many movies I have with the, the word squad in the title but it is definitely more than three. <laughs> um, this is a Fred Olin Ray film. He is notorious for very cheap, very entertaining bad movies. Uh, one of my absolute favorite bad movie directors, Fred Olin Ray, he made Alienator. Um, I believe he made another one called Wizards of the Demon Sword, which is incredible. Um, he's, yeah, he's great. Uh, this has got Brian Thompson in it uh, from Cobra. Time Runner. Um, so Mark Hamill didn't really have a particularly great live-action career after Star Wars. Um, he did very well for voice acting, for sure. He was a Joker. Uh, but live-action-wise, he's not known for much beyond Star Wars. He took a lot of sort of schlocky sci-fi roles in the 80s. Uh, and this was one of them. Time Runner. So we had Link before, now we've got another uh, killer monkey, Monkey Shines. Uh, um, uh, so this is a George A. Romero movie of Dawn of the Dead and all the of the dead fame. Um, there's Monkey Shines, he's gone berserk with a knife. And um, there's Monkey Shines about to slice a man, apparently. Um, not much else to be said, there's a killer monkey. And he shines. We've got birds of prey. Um, so apparently they're deadlier than the male. Um, so this is a Q 
killer woman movie, I believe. Her deadly claws are razor sharp. So trying to titillate and provide a sort of a murder kind of theme throughout the film. Birds of Prey, a bit of bit exploitative, yes, but that's what a lot of uh, a lot of these movies are. Great cover, hand drawn, looks badass. Um, not much else to say. It's just a really cool cover. Evil Speak. Um, so this is a uh, killer computer movie, I believe. Um, it stars Clint Howard, uh, who's one of those guys, again, whose face you know, but you might know, not know his name. It's actually Ron Howard's brother. Um, he has done a lot of shitty movies in his time, and this is one of them, Evil Speak. Uh, there's some sort of druid on the back, and things on fire. Probably caused by the evil speak. I believe Clint Howard is the master of this computer. He's like a nerd and he gets pushed over the edge and causes his computer to do evil things. Grandmother's house. Um, so this is a horror, I believe. Um, cool cover. Again, hand-drawn. Uh, spooky. Um, we've got... I don't really know much about this one. It's probably about Grandmother's House. That's all I can really say. Um, it stars Brinke Stevens, who's a uh, 80s scream queen. Um, yeah, so that's, that's Grandmother's House. Cyber Vengeance. Um, oh my god. So this is very, very mid, mid-90s. Um, we've got a cheap, de cheap looking demon on the cover. Um, probably computer generated, but mid-90s, so the technology's not quite there. Um, Robert Darby is in this, who was, uh, the Bond villain in one of the Timothy Dalton Bonds, and Matthias Hughes, who is a um, very interesting looking gentleman. There he is on the back. He's like a, a European martial arts champion um, who tried to break through into uh, bad movies. Well, not specifically bad movies, just movies in general. How rad is this? Exterminator 2. Um, just look at it. So badass. Um, I don't even... I don't even need to know anything else about this movie. I would just watch it based on that cover. Just a really cool cover. Um, a lot of things happening on the back. S murder. Women. Extermination. Um, yeah, so this is like a very good example of a terrible movie, but with an amazing cover. Insect! With an exclamation point. Um, so, a horror film. Stars Steve Railsback. Uh, quite well known in the B-movie circle. Um, he played, I believe, Ed Gein, the serial murderer, in a biography of Ed Gein. You've got some insect, probably, coming out of a gentleman's uh, mouth there. Um, yes, it is a worm-like grub, apparently, according to the blurb. And um, I'm guessing that it runs amok. So that's insect for you. Nam Angels. Let's fix the camera here. So we've got Nam Angels. Um, cool cover. 
uh, hand drawn again. Uh, so we got another another team based film, and this is about a team of American bikers who apparently are recruited to uh, fight in the Vietnam War. So it's kind of like a Dirty Dozen style movie, but with bikers. Um, again, Sirio H. Santiago is directing. Uh, he very well known for these sort of exploitation slash ripoff kind of movies. Made a lot of Mad Max ripoffs. Um, wicked cover. T Force. Uh, so this is a uh, squad movie, but from the late '90s, by the looks of it. Um, we got a very futuristic looking gun. We got a squad, probably the T Force there, standing around. Um, they may or may not be robots. Uh, I believe they they are. So they're cyborgs. Yeah, so this is a Universal Soldier uh, ripoff then. Yep, that's T-Force. 